build up two thunderbolts and then go for the first one here hopefully this gets the shield if it gets the shield i'm going to switch into my charizard but it almost one shots the caesar there that is like that did about 80 to 90 percent of season now they're probably going to think that we're going to go for a octazooka right but i'm just going to go straight for the gunk shot right now and this one shots the wiggly tough there that is so satisfying and also we win switch advantage what's up everybody welcome back so it's a new day and a new cup is here in go battle league but the spice continues on this channel because in this video i'm going to be trying out wash rotom in the love cup now this thing is an absolute monster and i'm pretty sure some of you might have tried it out already in open great league but if you're not familiar with it it's basically got the exact same typing as the lantern but except for the fact that it has a much higher attack stat and it's obviously equally glassy as well it's almost like a shadow shadow lantern but this thing hits like a truck and can sweep most back lines, especially with the shield advantage, right? But the one downside is that it's going to get completely walled by grass types, which is why I'm going to be running it in this team comp along with Octillery and Charizard, where I'm going to be leading with Charizard. And then at some point during the opening matchup, I'm basically going to safe switch into Octillery to bait out the grass type so that Rotom has a pretty clear path to sweep end game, right? Again, once the grass type is out of the way and once you have a shield advantage, there's not a lot of Pokemon that can take Thunderbolts and Hydro Pumps from a wash rotom right and also octillery is one of the best safe swaps as well because with mod shot it can generate energy very quickly and also obviously has access to gunk shot which can pretty much one shot charmers and grass types as well and of course charizard is absolutely incredible and probably one of the best pokemon in the love cup and overall this team is very very solid it's obviously going to struggle against electric types and something like electrode in particular but Again, it's not impossible to overcome because you have much shot on Octillery, which can do super effective damage. And also Rotom is only taking neutral damage from electric type moves, right? Because of the water electric typing. So anyways, like I said, there were some really exciting battles in here. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, moving on to the first battle here. Also, I'm going to be running Fire Spin as the fast move on Charizard. Even though PV Poke recommends Wing Attack, I prefer Fire Spin, especially to provide coverage against some of those Box Steel types like Wormadam and Caesar. So we have Charizard into a vaguely tough here. Pretty positive matchup because we're resisting charms because of the fire typing. And I'm going to over farm a little bit to make sure they don't switch out. And then I'm just going to go straight for the Blast Burn here. I'm not going to bait with Dragon Claw because just in case they let that go through, it would be double resisted. And we land the Blast Burn, which is huge. This tells me that they could have something else in the back, which is also weak to Charizard. So we need to get a safe switch into my Octillery here. They are still staying in with the Medicham. I'm going to go straight for the Octazooka right now. Now, again, Medicham is pretty tanky. So this is not going to do too much damage, but I'm really hoping to get an attack debuff. And we get the attack debuff. Now that is crucial in this matchup. So I'm going to shield this up because even though it's been lowered, I don't want to get hit by a Psychic. It's a good thing we shielded the Psychic there. And I'm going to try and build up to another Octazooka here. And the fact that they're not switching out tells me that they don't have a response to an Octillery, right? So I'm going to go for another Octazooka here. And uh, this does get the shield, which is great. And But it doesn't get the attack debuff this time, but it's okay. I'm going to let this go through because I have to save at least one shield for my Wash Rotom in the back, right? But they go for Ice Punch, which is really good because that's resistant. And also because of the, uh, the debuff. Uh, those counters are not doing enough damage and I'm able to get to another Octazooka here and this puts this Medicham pretty low and at this point I'm probably going to come in with my Charizard and try and get off a Dragon Claw as soon as possible. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to come in with my Charizard here and then we're probably a couple of Fire Spins away from a Dragon Claw and I'm going to let it go through, right? It's okay, I'm going to have to save the shield for Rotom and ends up being an Ice Punch which is okay, again, doesn't take us out because of the attack debuff and I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw here. Could have probably farmed it down with Fire Spin, but I didn't want to take any chances. Dragon Claw will take out the Medicham. Immediately going to switch into my Wash Rotom to make sure they don't get ahead on energy. And they have a Scolipede in the back. So this is perfect because the Scolipede is running Poison Jab. We're going to be able to outpace it to those charge moves, right? And obviously, Thundershock generates energy very quickly. So I'm going to shield this up. And we should be able to get to two Thunderbolts before they can get to another Sludge Bombs here. So I'm almost going to build up to two Thunderbolts and then go for the first one here. This is almost for sure going to get the shield from the Scolipede. And then, yeah, probably like a couple of Thundershocks away from the next one. I'm going to go for this one here. And again, Wash Rotom hits like a truck, right? So this is going to do massive neutral damage and pretty much one shot the Scolipede there. I mean, as you can see, I mean, once the grass type is out of the way, there's not a lot of Pokemon that can tank Hydro Pumps and Thunderbolts from Rotom. Obviously, Rotom gets stab on both those moves as well. And yeah, it can be pretty destructive when it comes to closing out games there. So anyways, moving into the next battle here. We have... Charizard into a Crustle. I'm gonna have to wait and see if this is a Fury Cutter or Rock Slide. Uh, it, uh, beg your pardon, Smackdown, it is Smackdown, which is absolutely terrible. Immediately gonna switch into my Octillery here and go straight for the Octazooka. And Octazooka is gonna be super effective because of the Rock Typing and they're still not switching out, which is really good for me. Uh, Octazooka does land and it doesn't get the attack debuff. 
And let's see what they decide to do here. They actually make a switch into their Wigglytuff. Now, they're probably going to think that we're going to go for a Octazooka, right? But I'm just going to go straight for the Gunk Shot right now. And this one-shots the Wigglytuff there. That is so satisfying. And also, we win Switch Advantage, which is crucial right now, right? They come back with their Crustle, which is okay. I'm, I'm going to actually come in with my Rotom here. And then, uh, yeah. But the unfortunate part is this is Crustle is loaded on NG, right? It's absolutely loaded. So, I'm going to have to shield this up. I'm probably going to have to invest both shields on my Rotom because I don't want my Charizard to go up against this Crustle. Uh, going to try and get off this Thunderbolt. Unfortunately, they get off another move. So, I'm going to have to shield this up as well. And at this point, I'm really hoping that I can get off two Thunderbolts before they can get off another charge move, right? So I'm going to overfarm a little bit, go for the first Thunderbolt here. I'm hoping they let this go through. But of course, they're going to shield that, which is okay. I'm going to try and build up to another Thunderbolt. This is going to be extremely close. Can we get it in time? Unfortunately, we don't get it in time, right? So that's very, very bad because, again, Charizard is pretty much going to go down to like three or four Smackdowns here. So I'm going to come in with my Charizard. We're not even close to a charge move right now. And then my only win condition is to try and farm the Crustle down and hope that they have a grass type in the bag. But yeah, I mean, Crustle can be very, very difficult to overcome, right? But I mean, it was uh, landing the Gunk Shot on Wigglytuff was a lot of fun. But yeah, it was a pretty tough battle there. So we have Charizard into a Trash Cloak Wormadam. Amazing matchup this. This is exactly why we have Fire Spin. Uh, obviously, Wormadam is double weak to fire because of the Bug Steel typing. And as you can see, these Fire Spins are absolutely destroying here. And they're not switching out, which tells me that they could have something else in the back, which is also weak to Charizard. So I'm going to shield this up. Even though it's resisted, uh, I want to preserve the health of my Charizard a little bit more. And then, uh, yeah, they come in with their Slowbro. Immediately going to save switch into my Octillery here. And then, yeah, the Slowbro is running Water Gun, which is really good. I'm going to try and build up to a Gunk Shot, but they go for a Charge Move, this is fine, right? Even if they go for Psychic, it's not going to one-shot the Octillery from this range. It does a lot of neutral damage, which is okay. And I'm just going to go straight for the Gunk Shot here. And uh, yeah, I was actually thinking about going for the Shield Bait, but might as well just go for the hard-hitting move. It does get the Shield, which is fine. Because at this point, we still have a Wash Rotom in the back, which hard counters the Slowbro, right? So I'm going to wait out the Switch Clock here and then come in with my Rotom. Uh, and let's see what they decide to do here. I am expecting them to switch, but they are still staying in. And I'm going to try and build up to a Thunderbolt here. I'm going to shield this up, right? Because Psychic would do a lot of neutral damage in this matchup. And it is a Psychic. It's a good thing we shielded that. And then they come in with their Caesar. Now, this is fine. This is ex are we, I'm, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to build up to two Thunderbolts and then go for the first one here. Hopefully, this gets the shield. If it gets the shield, I'm going to switch into my Charizard. But it almost one-shots the Caesar there. That is like... That did about 80 to 90% of Caesar's health, which is pretty significant. They go for the Night Slash, which is okay. Uh, because those bullet punches are double resisted, I'm able to farm it down with Thundershock. And then I'm immediately going to switch into my Charizard onto the Slowbro. And we have two back-to-back -back Blast Burns, right? And also we have a stored Thunderbolt on Rotom. So I'm going to go for the first Blast Burn here. They let that go through. It does massive resisted damage. And at this point, I can just go straight for Dragon Claw. And this is pretty much GG's at this point, right? Because we still have a Thunderbolt on Rotom. And Rotom wins CMP against Slowbro. So they let that go through as well because there's no way they were, they were going to come back from that there. So very interesting team comp. They were running both Wormadam and Caesar in the same team, which is... A pretty risky team considering how common Charizard is in the meta. But I guess since a lot of people are running Wing Attack, it's relatively safe. But I mean, if you're running into a Fire Spin user, then that's a pretty difficult team to use, right? So moving into the next battle here, we are uh, we have Charizard into a Makargo. Terrible matchup this because those Fire type moves are double resisted. While Rock type moves doing double super effective damage. Immediately going to safe switch into Rotom this time. The reason I switch into Rotom and not Octillery is because Octillery is the harder counter to a Makargo. They actually come in with Axel Guard, which is very, very spicy. Gonna go for the Thunderbolt here, does get the shield. And I really want to win switch advantage, right? Because I want to make sure that I line up my Octillery uh, against their Makargo. So I'm going to shield this up. I have no idea what an Axel Guard has. Uh, it's an Acid Spray, which is very, very unfortunate that we shielded that. And at this point, I'm going to try and go for a Hydro Pump because I'm, I know I can get to only one charge move anyways. And I'm going to let it go through, hoping it's just another Acid Spray. It still does a lot of damage there, but I'm barely able to get to a Hydro Pump here. I'm really hoping they let this go through. And it one-shots the Axel Guard there, which is fantastic because now we have Switch Advantage. And I can come in with my Octillery against this Makargo. And then they switch into their Wigglytuff. I'm going to go into Charizard. And this is pretty much GG's right now, right? I mean, winning Switch Advantage there was absolutely critical. I mean, if they had doubled shielded their Axel Guard, that would have been very bad because then I would have had a tough time, right? So going to go for the Blast Burn here. It one-shots the Wigglytuff. And in hindsight, I probably should have built up a little extra energy. I mean, because now... Uh, Makargo is able to farm down my Charizard, but it's okay, right? Octillery has a such Octillery has such a positive matchup against Makargo because Makargo is double weak to ground and double weak to water because of the fire rock typing. And I'm gonna shield this up uh, because I mean I mean I mean Octillery is gonna be able to outpace Makargo to those charge moves, right? It's a good thing we shielded the Stone Age that probably would have taken out the Octillery there. 
and I should be able to get to another Rock Bazooka before they can get to another charge move. So this is obviously going to be super effective because of the fire and rock typing and it's pretty much going to take it out there from that range. Uh, I mean, I'd love to see how much Octazooka does from full health. I'm pretty sure it should do about 60 to 70% of Makargo's health, if I'm not mistaken, because of that double weakness there. But yeah, I mean, I think winning switch advantage there was absolutely critical, right? So anyways, moving into the final battle here, we are 3-1 in one in the set right now. So we have Charizard into a Sunny Cherim. Perfect. You definitely want to catch these grass types on the lead. So this is such a positive matchup for Charizard. They come in with their Blaziken. So I'm going to stay in for a bit and throw the Dragon Claw. The reason I throw the Dragon Claw is because I want to weaken this Blaziken before bringing in my Octillery here, right? We, they let the Dragon Claw go through. This is perfect. Now this Blaziken is in perfect mud shot farm down range. And I'm going to have to watch out for a Brave Bird. So I'm going to shield this up because Brave Bird would probably one shot from this range. But they go for the Blaze Kick Shield Bait, which is okay. Because this is just going to be on the Blaze Kick, which is resisted because of the water typing. And I should be able to farm down before they can get to another move, right? And also, we're going to have a Gunk Shot ready to go if the Sunny Cherim does come back in. So at this point, we have a Gunk Shot ready to go. And the Cherim does come back in. I'm just going to go straight for the Gunk Shot here. Uh, and if this goes unshielded, it's pretty much going to one-shot it. And yeah, that is just, that is so juicy. I mean... This is why Octillery, I mean, when it can get on a roll, it can be so destructive. They come in with their Scolopede here. I'm also able to get to another Octazooka. Hoping to get an attack debuff. Does get the shield, which is okay. Doesn't get the attack debuff, which is fine. But at this point, it's pretty much GG's because we have a full health Charizard. And also a full health Rotom in the back, right? I'm going to shield this up. And then I'm going to be able to build up to two Dragon Claws. And then I'm going to go back to back here. So these five spins are absolutely chunking. Uh, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to go for the first Dragon Claw. I might as well just go for the Shield Bait because... Uh, yeah, even if they let it go through, it's pretty much going to be enough to take it out there. I mean, they had no choice, basically. I mean, even if they had shielded that, I could have gotten off another one. And we still had a full health Rotom in the back, right? So overall, as you can see, a very, very solid, fun team comp. I went 4-1 in this set. It was so much fun to use. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, both uh, Octillery and Rotom came in super clutch in a lot of situations there. But once again, I talked about this team's biggest weakness, which is going to be an Electrode. What do you do against an Electrode, right? It's, it's going to be pretty difficult. This is actually another battle which I did from another set. And I'm, yeah, I think it'd be a fair showcase to kind of show you what happens when you run into an Electrode. So I'm immediately going to switch into my Octillery here. And then I'm going to try and go for an Octazooka as soon as possible. Unfortunately, we lose CMP here. I'm going to have to shield this, right? Because Discharge would one-shot from this range. And luckily, we uh, shield the Discharge there. I'm going to build up to a little past. I mean, the reason I over-farmed there was I was expecting them to switch out, but they're still staying in. I'm going to go for the Octazooka here, hoping to get a debuff. It does get the shield and get the debuff, which is really good. I'm able to get to another Octazooka here. And this is not going to take out the Electrode, but it's going to put it pretty low. Uh, does put it pretty low there. And they also end up throwing more. I'm not sure if that was a CMP tie, but that's really good, right? Because they're going to throw a Discharge right now, which is fine. And I'm actually going to come in with Charizard and farm it down. Because Rotom with Thundershock is going to have a hard time farming this thing down. Whereas I'm going to be able to do it with Fire Spin, right? But they actually make a switch in their Octillery. Immediately going to go into my Rotom here. Now this is a pretty positive matchup, right? Because we have access to Thunderbolt, which can pretty much one-shot an Octillery. So I'm going to go straight for the Thunderbolt here. And it does get the shield from the Octillery. And I'm going to have to watch out for Gunk Shot in this matchup, right? I'm going to shield this up. And yeah, they go straight for the gunk shot. That is crucial right now because at this point, I can get to a Thunderbolt before they can get to another gunk shot, right? Now, this is just going to be an Octazooka, which is resisted. Those mud shots are really adding up because that's super effective because of the electric typing. But I mean, yeah, we get the attack debuff as well, but it's okay, right? Thunderbolt is still a pretty hard hitting move. And at super effective damage, it's definitely going to take out the artillery from this range. And then at this point, let's see what they come in with. I'm going to try and switch in my Charizard as soon as possible here. They come in with their Medicham, so immediately going to switch in my Charizard. And I'm expecting, expecting them to sack swap at some point. They make a switch in their Electrode. I'm going to try and completely farm it down here. This is perfect because we have a Blast Burn ready to go. Immediately going to go for the Blast Burn onto this Medicham here. This is going to do massive neutral damage. But again, Medicham is extremely tanky, right? It's not going to take it out. I'm trying to get to a Dragon Claw here. Unfortunately, we're one Fire Spin short of a Dragon Claw. If this is Psychic, it's, it's going to take out my Charizard. It does take it out. And then, uh, yeah, Rotom has no health in the back there. So, very tough. I mean, even though we had a tough lead with Electrode, we were still able to kind of come back from that. I mean, the fact that they had a Medicham in the back, which is extremely tanky. I mean, there's not a lot of Pokemon which can tank Blast Burns and neutral damage as well as Medicham can. But as you can see, it was very, very close there, right? So it's definitely not an impossible sort of Pokemon to beat, but it's definitely tricky, especially when it's on the lead as well. So overall, like you can see, I mean, overall, it was definitely a fun set of battles. It's a team that I would highly recommend. Uh, but uh, I'll be trying out a lot of other interesting team comps as well. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.